tea, and Lipton Soup presents Inner Sanctum Mysteries. Good evening, friends. This is your host of the Inner Sanctum, welcoming you again through the squeaking door for an hallucinating good time. Why am I smiling? But I always smile when I open the squeaking door on Tuesday night. You see, each week when I say good evening, I think to myself, a good evening for what? And of course, there's only one answer to that question. A good evening for... Murder. <laughs> a fine thing to say. You wouldn't feel so chipper about it if you were going to be murdered. Why, Mary, there's no bigger thrill than to be murdered. Why, it happens only once in a lifetime. <laughs> well, I know something else like that. Now, don't tell me that Lipton tea... No, I'm not thinking about Lipton tea. I'm talking about that solid sterling silver medallion that the Lipton tea people are offering to the ladies. Yes, ladies. It's the chance of a lifetime to get a lovely piece of jewelry. The kind you find at those smart shops on Fifth Avenue in New York. Now, let me tell you about the medallion. It's made of real sterling silver. It's about an inch in diameter, and it's decorated with a Chinese inscription. The medallion is hung on a narrow black rayon satin ribbon, so it can be worn as a necklace, a choker, or you can simply add it to your charm bracelet. And here's how you get the medallion. Just send 25 cents and the box top from a package of Lipton's, the tea with the brisk flavor, to the Lipton Tea People, Box 92, New York City. Yes, that's Box 92 in New York City. And now it's time to begin. Our story is called Dead to Right. It's an original spine tingler by Sigmund Miller. And our stars tonight are two radio favorites. Elspeth Eric and Santos Ortega. So relapse in your chair, settle down for a half hour of alarming but charming entertainment. Why not get really reckless tonight? Go the whole work. Turn off the main switch in the cellar. The darker it is, the more strange things you'll see. Lou Dunn is nervously pacing his room in a dingy boarding house near the East River in Manhattan. His wife, Dottie, is looking at an old newspaper. That's him, Dottie. You can see for yourself. That's Jensen, that queer old guy. He lives upstairs with $20,000. Mm-hmm. That's him, all right. All that money. Only a floor above us. According to this paper... William Jensen was found wandering through the streets in a semi-conscious condition due to lack of food. The police discovered $20,000 in $100 bills mixed with crusts of bread in his pocket. He's being sent to Bellevue Hospital for observation. That newspaper's more than a month old. Mm. Jensen's been back for two weeks. Hey, Daddy. Hmm? Must be some way we can get that money. There is. You mean Robin? Robin? Maybe kill him. Kill him? If you're not scared. Scared? Well, I ain't scared of anything. I know you. You always talk toughness about all. I, I'm not scared. We could knock him off. Make it look like suicide. You really want to do it? Yeah, sure. I could put my hands in a twenty grand. Boy, what we couldn't do with that money. It'll be easy. If we do it smart. Very smart. Sure, sure. Maybe. Maybe you could sort of visit him. Just before he goes to bed. Turn on the gas. That'd make it look like suicide. Then we could go back and pick up the money. Not not all of it. We'll leave half of it so it won't look like robbery. Sure. 
He's a crazy guy. It's natural for a crazy guy to knock himself off. Mm-hmm. When do we do it? Well, if we're going to do it, we got to do it right now. We'll never have the guts to do it later. Now, you sure you want to do it, Lou? Sure. Sure I do, darling. If the Scully was gone to the movies, what time is it now? It's, uh, five to ten. She won't be back till after eleven. Well, that only gives us about an hour. Oh, you've got plenty of time. Jensen goes to bed just about this time. You go on up, stay with him until he's in bed. And then, on your way out, you turn on the gas. Not too much, because that'll make a lot of noise. And keep your finger off the spigot. Use a stick or a glove or something. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Well, okay. What are you waiting for? Hmm. You want me to go now? Well, what do you want to do? Die a heart failure worrying about it? Go ahead! <laughs> Done, the guy that lives right under you. Oh, just a minute. I was just about to get to my bed. Is there anything special you want? No. I just had a little argument with the wife. Oh. Uh-huh. Kind of. I don't want to go back right now. Uh-huh. You're going to teach her a lesson. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Come in. You can talk to me while I get into bed. Thanks a lot, Mr. Jensen. I, I, won't, I won't stay long. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you, you going to bed right now? Yeah. yeah. Would you mind helping me take off my shoes? Sure. I'm getting too old to bend down. Oh, sure. Sure thing. Uh, uh, thank you. Oh. That's no place to hide your money behind the pillow. Huh? That ain't no money. It's just a lot of pictures. It's all just pictures. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I ain't gonna be good company. Feel kind of sleepy. Well, maybe I'd better get back. Nice of you to come see me, though. It's freezing outside. I'd better close the windows or you'll catch cold. Well, good night, Mr. Jensen. Good night. without being seen. Everything will be all right. Hey, someone's coming up the steps. It's Mrs. Scully, the landlady. It's dark. Maybe she won't recognize me. I pulled my hat over my face. Mr. Dunn? I beg your pardon. Well, I'm sorry. I thought you were Mr. Dunn. It's all right. Good night. Good night. Anything go wrong? We're going to be caught. Calm down. Tell me what happened. I did everything you said. Everything worked fine until I got outside. I met Mrs. Scully in the hall. I pulled my hat over my face. She recognized you? She called my name. But I disguised my voice. Nothing to worry about. I'm sure she knew it was me. We're going to get caught. Did you come right down here? No. I went outside for a few minutes in case she was watching me. That's good. Now you got to go back and get that money. He... He's dead by now. I, I can't go back. You've got to go now before the gas leaks into the hall and everybody knows about it. I, I can't. I can't do it. All right, I'll go myself. Where'd you say the money was? The, the pillow under his head. Stay here till I get back. Maybe. Maybe we ought to forget. No. Not after we've gone this far. <laughs> It's me, Mrs. Scully. Let me in. 
What do you want? Well, the people downstairs have been complaining. There's water leaking down the ceiling. Water? Yes. I'd like to take a look at the sink. Well, sure, sure. Hmm. Funny. Pipes aren't leaking. Just, just a mistake, huh? Oh, they must be cranks. Floor's dry. Is that all, Mrs. Scully? No. You're a couple of days over on your rent. We'll have it for you tomorrow. Oh, well, you better. I have to pay the bills, you know. Sure, I, I, I promise you. Well, all right. Say, didn't I pass you upstairs on the fourth floor a little while ago? Me? Oh, you must have me mixed up with someone else. It looked like you. Had you build? Uh, I haven't been out of this room for a couple of hours. Hey, Lou, I can't... Uh, Dolly, Miss Scully. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Scully. Hello, Mrs. Dunn. I was just telling your husband about the rent that... Do hey, you smell gas? Yeah. Must be a gas jet open someplace. Well, you'd better take a look at your stove. Don't want any accidents in this house. Oh, no, neither do we. Seems to be coming from the hall. I... Better take a look at that empty room. You should have knocked before you came in. You almost gave the whole thing away. Yeah, I know. Had the money right in my hand. I only took half the dough, about $9,000, I figure. The cops questioned Mrs. Scully. We'll be done for. Yeah, she smelled the gas on me. I almost died in that room. we got to get away from here. Well, maybe you're right. I'm getting kind of scared myself. Things ain't working out so perfect. Let's get packed. Okay. we better hurry. No, no, wait a minute. We ain't going to pack. We're not going to stay here. Listen, if we walk out with our suitcases, we'll be giving ourselves away. We just... We found out about Jensen. we got to stay calm or we're dead pigeons. What should we do? We've got to get out of the house first. We can't go out the front door, not now. Maybe with all this excitement going on, we can sneak out without them knowing. I tell you, I'm scared, Daddy. Oh, my. Come on. Now or never. There's nobody at the front door. Well, that's a break. What's going on here? The cops, they just came in. Quick, get back in the room before they see us. No, 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 no. There must be some other way. Well, <laughs> Daddy and Lou are in bad shape. My only hope is that they don't die of heart failure before the end of the program. That would be very embarrassing. Sometimes I wish the characters in our stories would show a little more nerve. They all get so flustered. It's not that they aren't first quality villains, but they're too indecisive. Well, what do you think is going to happen to them? Oh, they'll probably turn on the gas again. Oh, please. And brew themselves a pot of Lipton tea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you fooled me that time, and now I'm going to fool you. I'm not going to talk about Lipton tea. Instead, I'm going to tell you a story. Yes, it seems there's a true story behind that sterling silver medallion that the Lipton people are offering to the ladies. It's really a good luck charm. The original was given to an American flyer by Chinese guerrillas who rescued him after he'd bailed out over enemy territory. The flyer was told that the Chinese letters on the medallion would identify him and bring him safely through the lines. Well, he did get through. And only then did he learn that the medallion said, Good luck. In Chinese. Now, ladies, there's something to tell your friends. And to get this good luck charm, this lovely sterling silver medallion, just like the one the flyer carried, all you have to do is send 25 cents and the box top from a package of Lipton's, the tea with the brisk flavor, to the Lipton Tea People, Box 92. That's Box 92, New York City. Well, now let's go back to our pale and panicky pair of murderers. If you remember, they ran back into their room when the police came in. And since then, they've been trying to figure a way out. Maybe they've got a plan. So let's take a look, shall we? We've got to think of something. How about that back stairway? I don't know where it goes. Well, it's better than staying here. Cops will see us. got to take that chance. They're probably still upstairs. Come on. Let's hurry. Oh, you know... I gotta open the door to get to the back stairway. Oh, man, it's loud. Oh, the door's locked. Don't be a fool. Maybe it's just right. It's jammed. 
I suppose I could try to open it. Don't use the cops. He'll be down in a minute. Come on. Come on. Let's push it. Get him. It's opening. Just a little bit more. We can just step through it. You all right? Mm -hmm. Like it's cold in here. The airway goes down to the cellar, I guess. Come on. People he's following it. Keep talking love to me. You're wonderful. I'm crazy about you. You're wonderful too, Lou, darling. I've waited all my life for somebody like you. I don't know what I'd do without you. You're still following us. Yes, sweetheart. Look, we got to figure out something. Maybe we can give him the slip in the subway. Yeah. Look, I'll go in the subway first. You go in the cigar store. He'll follow you. I'll wait for you on the platform. You come down a few minutes after me. Have a nickel already. Then as soon as the train pulls in, wait till the doors are closing. Then drop your nickel in the slot. I'll hold the door open for you. Whoever's following won't be able to make it. You understand me, dear? Well, what if he arrests me for? He won't. Look, here's where I go down the subway. You go into the store. Kiss me. Okay. Darling... Don't forget to wait until the doors are closing. Come on. Forget 
getting off here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We gotta hide this money. So they won't have anything on us in case we get caught. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. We can come back with later, huh? Hide it right underneath the platform. Yeah, that's a good spot. No one on the station. Let's do fast. Here's the money. I'll hold you while you bend over. All right. Be careful you don't drop it. Now hold on good. I'm liable to fall. Hurry up before somebody comes along. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's hidden. Let's go. We'll be back for it in a day or so. <laughs> Put your arm around me while we go up into the street. I can't do it anymore. If you don't do what I'm leaving you. No, don't. That's better. Sweetheart. Yeah. I guess you're the best girl for me. You just wouldn't know what to do without me. Would you, darling? Don't turn around. There's nobody following us. There's a cop right behind us. They must have radioed a description of us. Cops don't follow people. They arrest them if they think they're guilty. Well, maybe he ain't sure. Maybe he's watching us first. We'll turn the corner. Without hurrying. You do love me, don't you? Uh, I love you more than anybody else in the world. I love you, too. You're right, we are being followed. What are we going to do? There's a factory up ahead. We'll make believe we're going in on the night shift. That ought to throw him off the track. We get caught in the building. Well, it's worse out here on the street. When the cop sees us going to the factory, he'll think he's made a mistake and he'll leave us alone. Now hang on to me tight and walk slow. <laughs> Walk in just as if we belong here. Oh, he hasn't followed us in. No, it worked fine. Now we can stay here for a few minutes and we'll... It's the cop. We're caught. Let's take the elevator up. Come on. Floor C? Uh, 16. There's no one on the 16th. It's empty, ma'am. Uh, she needs a 15th. Yeah. Hurry up, please. We're, we're very late. In a second, there's an officer coming in. Thank you for waiting. So, please. Just take these people wherever they're going. Yes, sir. Watch the door. Where are you two going? Uh, the 15th floor. Who are you seeing on the 15th floor? What do you want with us? We didn't do anything. Oh, I just asked you who you're seeing on the 15th floor. We... We work up there. Fifteen, please. Come on, Lou. Uh, just a second. Run, Lou. Run. Run out the corner. Here, shoot her. Hurry up. Good kill her. Barbara, I'll shoot her. There's a fade elevator. No, good. If we can make it, we can slam the door and run ourselves. Wait a minute. Hurry up, Lou. Come on. Oh, yes, I can. Quick. Stop. Oh. the elevator. Precinct 23. Hmm. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. This is Officer Malone. I want to report a double suicide. Their names are Lewis and Dorothy Dunn. Hmm. Now, I knew they were going to do it, and I tried to stop them. I saw them in the subway station. The man was trying to jump off the platform, but the woman was holding him back. He changed his mind, and they went upstairs. It it looked like a lover's suicide pact to me. And I saw them holding each other around, kissing on the street. I followed them from the subway into this building, and when I asked them a few questions, they got frightened and got off on the 15th floor. Yeah. Well, I did. I tried to stop them, Lieutenant. They, they ran down the corridor and then threw themselves down an empty elevator shaft. Dead? 
Uh, doornails, yeah. Uh, Lieutenant, you know, the funny part of it is, they lived in the same house where that old crackpot, Jensen, committed suicide by gas a few hours ago. Huh? What? Yeah. Yeah, that sure is an unlucky house. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's one way of getting rid of the duns. Making them throw themselves down the elevator shaft. Not a very pleasant way, I'll admit. But business is business. We just don't fool around with characters like that. Well, I can't help feeling sorry for them. Those poor people probably never had a lucky day in their lives. And it's your fault, Mary. You should have given them one of those good luck charms you've been talking about. You know, the medallion with the black ribbon. Yes. If the medallion didn't bring them good luck, they could always hang themselves with the ribbon. <laughs> now, you stop that kind of talk. Because Lipton's sterling silver medallion on its black rayon satin ribbon is a lovely piece of jewelry. But you may never own it if you don't act now. The Lipton tea people make it easy for you. Listen. Just send 25 cents and the box top from a package of Lipton's. The tea with the brisk flavor. To the Lipton tea people, box 92, New York City. The 25 cents includes the full cost of packing and postage. <laughs> advice. If the elevator service is bad and you're in a hurry, just throw yourself out of the window. <laughs> oh, by the way, this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery novel is The Red Right Hand by Joel Rogers. Oh, and I must tell you about next week's story. It takes place on the high sea, but it's about a man who doesn't like singing. Yes, singing seems to strike the wrong note with him. And he goes around opening up throats with a knife to find out just what makes that wrong note. <laughs> so, if you're one of those guys who sings in the shower, just cut it out before next week's killer does it for you. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to close the squeaking door until next Tuesday when Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup present another Inner Sanctum Mystery directed by Hyman Brown Good night Pleasant dreams Mmm <laughs> It's wonderful how quick and easy cooking is these days. I guess lots of you remember when it used to take half a day to make a pot of chicken noodle soup. But now we have Lipton's noodle soup mix. And what delicious chickeny tasting soup it is. Yes, Lipton's has an old-fashioned homemade flavor. And it's brimful of tender golden egg noodles. Lipton's is economical, too. It costs less and makes more than canned soups. Of course, sometimes it's hard to get in some stores these days, but there's lots of good things scarce in wartime. So, folks, remember to ask for Lipton's noodle soup. And remember to tune in next Tuesday night for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>